Hey, welcome everybody to the Regal Draft League podcast. It's Starstreak here, also known as Braylon Boy. And here with me, Draco. Hello. My name is Draco. I am a... Uh, this is my first time playing Draft League. I'm the newest coach, coach of the Terra Dark Titans. I don't have any experience in draft, but I have been playing VGC for four years, so that's where I, that's where my experience comes from. Next we have Silent. Yeah, uh, and um, thank you for having me here on this little podcast thingy. Um, well, I'm just a viewer in this league, but uh, I've uh, at this point played two seasons over in the UPL in the national decks format with, with some, let's say, very positive success there. So, um, I'd, I'd say uh, if, when it comes to draft, at least in the NetX format, I uh, know a thing or two. And um, over to uh, my fellow Flupo here. Hello. Uh, I have played in this uh, league two seasons before, uh, but I'm not playing this season. Uh, I'm usually the coach of the Gothenburg Gothicals. Uh, I've been playing draft like about a year. Don't really have much experience in like normal VGC, except for like watching mainly. Like I, I like watching tournaments. I don't really play myself that much. Uh, but yeah, I've only played VGC draft or doubles draft. I played in the same draft league as uh, Silent before. Um, uh, and uh, I've played in this draft league two seasons currently also playing in UPL. So yeah. Uh, and yeah, last season I got uh, two semi-finals in this league and I was fir first seed coming out of the uh, regular season, but then I got destroyed. Uh, so I can maybe start it off with the first seed. Or should we introduce something else before that? I, I think that was pretty all right and we can go into the first team yeah okay so we're gonna go in order of uh, me first t uh, introducing a team then uh, silent with the next team uh, and then uh, Draco and then uh, Berlin yes. and then we cycle through the teams like that so the first team had uh, the first draft position is uh, the Grumpy uh, Pigs Kimberly's team. Um, this team has uh, made two trades since uh, 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 during week one, which are not active right now. So the current team, uh, yeah, it has Turco Galade. It also has. Uh, uh, it has this like uh, double rain core kind of. It also has a uh, size spam core between DD and Iron Crown. And then uh, Raviar is the tailwind setter. But Salasso is a uh, some fake out and cold sire. I'm not really sure. The I think uh, the trades that were made in this team were good. Uh, getting rid of Turco and uh, Galate, kind of trying to too many things. All you really have been DD for Trickle and Tools or even exactly Nicolade and having both Politoed and Torco seems like too much to juggle to get the actual value out of them. So instead of getting Kamal and uh, Scissor seemed like good trades. Um, yeah, on top of that, they're in, in trading in for especially Komo, -o, they're starting to round out some of their cores which is something that i think about a lot when i'm valuing evaluating a team is like what do they have on cores the your fantasy and your starter core is what i look at the most uh and right now they're really lacking the dragon type which kind of hurts their typing they do have kingdra oh they do have kingdra i think a You're point right. of uh the Kamal that makes it a weaker draft is that they already do have kingdra yeah. And their fairy weakness uh, isn't that big. They have a few poison types. They have Iron Crown. 
but uh, also if like you don't exactly need the mono, it's definitely better than. Uh, but uh, King Graal already is hitting with those special dragon type moves like the mono. They obviously yeah. are kind of different, where the mono appreciates indeed his support a little bit more than, and King Graal is obviously probably for its support. But, uh, I don't know. It's definitely better than Tomorrow Fort, at least. Yeah, and, and Scizor is great in rain, honestly. Like, it really mm -hmm. gets rid of its... It really helps with its fire weakness that the team is already really strong against anyway. Yeah, I think uh, uh, a weird thing with Scizor in this team, so it's, like, very nice with the rain. But then it gets weird when there's psychic terrain, because uh, bullet punch is, uh, like, the strongest move Scizor. Um, so you can't use it with this team, which makes it a bit weird, but it's a very good value for 8 so I'll be fine. Yeah, also overall this team um, has, in my opinion, quite a weak spot to opposing water types. Like, uh, okay, you resisted with Pult and Kingra, but you're not really going to hurt them with them. And neither Scizor nor uh, Como really help you with that. So that's yeah. uh, a major flaw there. I, th uh, I if know. If I remember correctly, we discussed getting Ogre Pawn, the other, the one that's free, but uh, that one isn't free anymore. So, yeah. uh, that one got picked up by another team in week one, so that is not an option. So, uh, so not, the... I'm not really sure what the better other option would be then. Yeah, the thing is, uh, to actually deal with opposing water types in the rain mode, uh, you have to use your Terra at this point, cause you have no electric type, no grass type to uh, rely on. That might get a bit tough at that point. Also, okay. I'm really not a fan of Claude Sire at all. Like, this this one in doubles is uh, just a sitting duck, in my oh, opinion. Oh yeah. I would like to say, for the one water weakness, Claude Sire does have water absorb, so that is your one water type answer, although it is... Um, neutral to grass, it can counter back with poison, and unaware is useful to some extent to dealing with bulky mons like our Chaladon that can get defense boost from stamina and other bulk up. Although there's no Don Dozo chosen here, more yeah. setup mons. So Clotside does have some sorts of strength. It's fairly slow, which can be beneficial versus opposing Trick Room. And actually, it's quite slow, one of the slowest, only a bit fast. Tied with Torkoal, a bit faster than Pinchurchin, which it's makes it gonna... a very solid trick room. Yeah, but... it's not gonna do much damage, though, really. Uh, yes, and the trick room, it simply does not do anything. And the big part here is uh, you have Ndidi. You are very good at actually blocking trick room. And this team does not want trick room to go up. If trick room goes up against this team, this one is in trouble big time. Yeah, that, that kind of hurts it. The, the like there it, there could be a trick room mode here but it's not it's not good yeah the mode it's... used to be there with Torkoal Glade but now that they after the trades it's not present yeah I think it was better to trade those away though because I don't think you can go double weather like, yeah. but I mean Glade isn't even that slow to begin with the base 80 yeah. is relatively slow but it it's not trick room mm. slow I just wanted to reject everything above 50 in draft is not a re reliable trick room mode at all. Like, if you if you try to go in trick room with that, there's a very high risk you get burned for that. I think uh, you, you shouldn't use stuff above 50 as a trick room mode, but uh, you can still use trick room with it if, if uh, to, like, counter the opponent sometimes. Yeah, if you, you know your opponent is pressing tailwind, like there are a few teams that just will put, will go for this. this, this might honestly save your butt since uh, your own tailwind is not that good. Braviary is just mediocre at best. So you do have Iron Crown though, which is too fast. Uh, but, the uh, team yeah, overall isn't too fast, actually, if you look at it. Uh, everything besides the Lazels uh, below um, 100 means you need tailwind. To, I to outspeed or pray uh, that your opponent tries to go for something like that and uh, get him with trick room. This this is something you... that can really hurt this team. Yeah, 
this is kind of hard to prevent tailwind from going up immediately like you don't really have the most reliable takeout users you don't uh, have like anything yeah to really so like obviously you have uh, the stiffs in Kingra uh, it's just that the lead polytoll Kingra for example uh, they just set up tailwind and uh, and they can probably eat a hit from Kingra or something or they just fake out the Kingra because there's no really way to prevent that not gonna run as a pro from the Kingra yeah so overall uh, I guess we are in agreement that this uh, ov even if this team has some really good offense, it's uh, on actually bringing this offense to bear because uh, of the speed problem uh, we are discussing right now. It can be rather tricky for uh, Trimbelli. Yeah, for you sure. And I to respect. Uh, I would agree with that. Yeah. The size band for this. Yeah, like it's got stuff that you need to respect, but it's at the end of the day, it's not great. Coming from a VGC angle, Iron Crown, when the format officially started, has really pop, really picked up by lots of beginners and obvious Saipan players. But as the format commenced, it became it, it it became obvious that it's not the it's not a very consistent option with the with a lot of terrain spreading and I just think, dark types really starting yeah, it I down. Yeah, I think worth mentioning though is that that in normal VGC, like a lot of teams can just run Hyper Goblin. But yeah, there's quite a lot of terrain, I guess, in this uh, league too, so... Yeah. Uh, not every team has it. I... I'm, say, um, I'm just trying to add that Iron Crown needs... Its most best source of damage does come from expanding force. So if you have a way to block that, either wide guard, dark type, or something just get outspeed and eliminate it immediately, it's not that threatening because Tachyon Cutter is not actually too strong of a move versus... A lot of things, even off of its special attack stat. I yeah, mean, Tachyon it's... Cutter is still, what, base 50 hits twice? It's yeah, decent it's, for a, it's, a steel it, type move. It's, it's good enough, but against opposing steel types and opposing dark types, it usually doesn't make the cut. And uh, relying on Focus Miss to actually kill those types is, let's say, um, brave. Yeah. But I think uh, with... Uh, with uh, a size spam. Maybe you need more threatening things. Kumo is pretty threatening. If uh, like another thing that you also need to prep for, it can be pretty annoying. But uh, I think not having a very strong tailwind setter can uh, make it easier for the opponent. Yeah. By the way, still for you're getting a bit quiet again. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, I don't know what to do about that. No problem. I'll just it's... remind you once it ha when it, if it happens again. So. Uh, anything else we would like to add here? I, I think we've fairly well covered this team. Okay. Uh, so how about then I'll um, take us over to the next one. The Welsh Rubats by uh, Matt Ronan. Yeah. And this one, this one is a team just to my heart. A Whimsicott team. Like, Whimsicott is, in my opinion, the best mon in draft. Hands down, if you're not first picking it, you're making a mistake. That's just my opinion there, but I like to throw it out there. Overall, this team has quite a uh, nice lot of nasty things going with it. Like, the various, very obvious one, the beat-up strategy with Annihilate or Lucario. Um, ways to actually protect it with a uh, fake-out from Omnipon, which is one of the fastest, fa fastest fake-out users available at the moment, at least in this league. Um, Reaction with Ogrepon and uh, a lot of upfront damage with even Ogre Pawn, Annihilate upfront damage, and Sandy Shocks to just nuke the things out of existence once ta uh, to trim, uh, trim. Tailwind goes up. Also, there are a few other nice little things here. Whimsicott can also very nicely set, su uh, set Sun, which is honestly really good for Sandy Shocks and Delphox to wreak havoc if it need be. And uh, it's really helps with uh, being at least a little bit soft defensively to fire. Mm -hmm. Also, something I'd like to add is uh, one of the little mons in the back here, Clawwitzer. Uh, this thing for 5 points is really good for this team. Its main drawback is its speed. Like, 59 is not good, but 
120 special attack with mega launcher and its uh, move pool really hurts. Um, for as reference, I used uh, in NetX League Mega Blast with, uh, with Whimsicott uh, a lot. And uh, Clawwitzer comes really close in damage. Especially if you add something like li like uh, life up there. And that stuff gets threatening really fast. Also, this trick is not a soft trick room uh, as you might think. Since, okay, uh, taunt alone usually isn't enough to stroke stop trick room since mental herb exists but stuff uh, but uh, for example high dragon can just rather reliably raw the trick room setter out and uh, isn't even under that much threat because of its natural bulk yes it's not the most not the most bulky one but it's bulky enough um, to not go down to any random hit especially with para and uh, also presents enough threat so your opponent just can say uh, screw it and uh, for a random attack add it without any caution. I think also uh, beat up on uh, if you try to set up trick room. So like it, it can use the Oko, uh, stuff like that also. Yeah, but if you really want to go uh, that route I'd say go final gambit on Annihilate um, and trick room on Whimsicott. Your opponent will not see it coming. Yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> For sure, there's so many things to do. There are a lot of funny things that can be done with this team, for sure. Yeah. Like there is there is nightmare fuel uh, for your opponent to play. Like I really like this team. There's like. Also, no hmm? There's also a surprising amount of other ways of damage. Something like even without sort of ruin, you can always go Terra Normal, Choice Man, Extreme Speed, Lucario, Out Speed, other forms of priority users and Hydreigon, which is extremely underrated. The only thing that's really, in my eyes, stopping Hydreigon from going crazy in VGC is the fact that Fluttermane came came out everywhere. But in this league, where fairy types are fairly limited, all things considered, it can go quite hard with the amount of coverage it gets. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, for sure. I, I really like Hydreigon as a late pickup here. It uh, shores a lot of a uh, lot of the weaknesses up for the team. Like yeah, already being ground nice. weak is uh, some yeah, is exactly. something this team has, and Hydreigon uh, as an immunity is quite nice to have there. Yeah, it's very good. Very like feels very nice to have the levitates, and also with Clovisor not the speeding, you got the prankster tailwind, so you usually be able to get it to get the hit up first, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're going against a opposing tailwind, Clawitzer's speed isn't going to be too big of yeah. a detriment. Like uh, the only thing that's really going to set up tailwind before the whimsicott is like uh, uh, tornadoes. Uh, nope, tornadoes right? actually slower, but that doesn't matter. The, the, other uh, pranks, the, uh, the other pranks they use are all slower than whimsicott. That's why whimsicott is so nasty. Oh and yeah, whimsicott's one sixteen. And I after mean, the... tornadoes can at least. Uh, yeah. Challenge it. Like, it doesn't matter with the pranks they use, but with every other trick, uh, other tailwind user, if they are not like Neuven levels fast, they are not fast enough to stop the claw with before it lasts something. The other yeah. thing to point out is that there is no Tornadus right now. Yes. Th oh that's yeah, that something. got traded away. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's Illumisa for example, which is another um, way tailwind slower, but though. overall it's a way weaker lead, so... And it can't, it can't, it can't, it's so much lower, it can't compete with uh, Whimsicott, so it's yeah. basically the same thing as a normal Tailwind user. Nah, not really, since it still goes first and kind of denies Clawwitzer, but yeah. yeah. That's, ah, yeah so, true, true. It, it'll still go before whatever the partner for the Prankster Tailwind is, but it's yeah. only I mean, so and far. Even that, that Clawwitzer has just enough defense to uh, actually, with a little bit of investment, survive hits. That's something not to overlook there. It's not. You, it, can, it's taunt, right, no, no. you can also taunt with Whimsicott, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. Whimsicott forces a taunt lot of protects than Tailwind. Yeah. So it's nice to have the faster Tailwind or a uh, Prankster use. Yeah. But, uh, so, overall, I'd say I personally really like this team from what I can gather from you guys. You also like this one. So, I'd say. Um, we call it uh, uh, we call it over to uh, um, Reiko here. And yeah, we'll move on to the next team. 
Alright, so this is my team. I am the coach of the Terra Dark Titans. I will tr Tyrants. I'm so I'm sorry, just as a side note, I chose the name Tyrants, but I even myself have to correct myself, always calling it Titans instead. So that's a, a mess up on my end. Anyways, um... So, I will try to be brief on this, because obviously as the coach I could go on for a while about why I drafted every single Mon here. And I'll try to keep my own, like, inputs brief, because obviously my I have my own bias. So everyone else will be free to go on and give any criticisms which they fairly see, because obviously I'm this is my first time in draft, so I'd love to learn to see what I've got right and wrong. So to start off, my took Ogre Pond Hearthflame, which I, I re I'm the one who argued in this league to get all four Ogre Pawns available for craft. So if anyone's upset about it, that is very much partially my fault. So yeah, Ogre, and I took Ogre Pond. I did not actually decide on terrain. I just decided I wanted Thwacky and then the rest of the terrain idea came to me. I'd like to say that I, I consider myself to have the fastest team in this draft, with Sneasler, Alolan Raichu, Iron Boulder, uh, and Priority Spam with Ogre Pond, Thwacky, and um, Azumarill with Aqua Jet, and then just naturally fast Mon like Noivern. Um, I would say I have a fairly big, uh, the biggest weakness on my team is Ground, which is, I still have two Flying Types in Gliscor and Noivern, and it, the most common spread ground move is Earthquake, which obviously is weakened by Grassy Terrain. Now, this team is not even too weak to Trick Room, as Pinchurchin and Spiritomb are one, two of the slowest ones here. And as I displayed in my recent match, which just happened about a few hours ago, my Spiritomb came in very much clutch versus the Trick Room setter, Urza and Mons as it was able to beat Amoongus, Screamtail, Iron Hands, all with its amazing utility of setup and surprising amount of damage which a lot of people tended to overlook. When I saw Otter talking about my team, they were more... They were talking about Spiritomb as a supportive piece, but I had planned it as for offense, in that matchup at least. Please spec Spiritomb with Shadow Ball did a lot. Well, final things to add up, I have solid setup options with Sneezer, and Azumarill, which can all be very much uh, follow, paired with Ogre Pond's Follow Me as the best redirector, most likely. And that's about it, yeah. I Something that I have found is I very integral to draft teams that I don't think is here is something to get rid of opposing uh, setup. Or something to ignore it, at least. And you're really missing Clear Smog and Haze. Uh, and, and the setup that tends to happen, I, you can't do a lot about it. Um, mind if I interject here? Go ahead. Since I'd actually say this is not a problem. This team is from what at least the first six mon want, mons want to do, is just beat you down so that you can't even think about setting up. And... Uh, Overall, against not too passive teams, setting up is rather risky, in my opinion, and a bit overdone. Because um, it can be punished so heavily. Like, setting up with Sneasler is, in my opinion, a mistake. This, this thing is a surgical tool, surgical removal tool. You use it to pick off something of the enemy team, trade it one for one, and be happy with it. I, I would like to mention, it's hot to set up versus this team, but it doesn't really have anything to... I guess... Hyper cutter works on that, but like doesn't have anything that would make you think, oh, I can't intimidate this team. But uh, you can run, a, you could run like uh, clear amulet, I guess. Um, yeah, really defensive teams, I think, could manage to set up with this if they have good indicators. Okay, yeah, right, right. That's something uh, we talked about yesterday, right? Yeah. So uh, yes, that's the other major flaw with this team is. Uh, that you have no deterrence for Intimidate, uh, Willow Spam, etc. Your team is rather soft with you. are mainly physical attackers. And uh, that might uh, come to bite you. Also, um, I personally am not a, not a fan of the Pseudo Trick Room uh, 
core you have. Yes, Spiritomb is a decent support on its own, but overall I'd say uh, go, uh, going with something a bit more uh, punchy for your fast mode to actually make sure your fast mode does kill everything you want to kill is more important. And this, mi this might um, <laughs> make me a bit, uh, yeah, not like by you, but I really don't like Gliscor here. In my opinion, Gliscor is um, a bulky Tailwind setter for uh, s uh, a bit more slower for slower teams that uh, take a bit more of a measured approach. And Reinford, since its its defenses are alright, uh, and if you can pivot it uh, uh, around its weaknesses, it's do workable, especially with the new nukes it got uh, it got uh, in this generation. High loss power. Yeah, for example, that one. Uh, but overall, I think for how you for the tempo your team looks to play uh, at least uh, from what I can see here it's uh, a tad bit too slow to um, function properly yeah I mean it has the fast uh, um, really fast like physical attacker and Neuwang to go hard just uh, break through teams but uh, maybe even shifting the focus a little more into that you you did showcase uh, Raichu Alola uh, to be fairly competent as a as a special attacker this week. Uh, so that's a special attacker, but maybe having something more on the special attacking side would be helpful. He also did run Spirit Tomb the choice specs, which did work out. So that was shows really smart, creative team building. Yeah, which. But uh, Still, the fact that uh, if you run into a uh, precautionary AV, for example, you're you're getting ki uh, kind of stalled there, since all the special attackers are below 100 uh, base power. Yes, you can make it work. And there are other ones uh, you can make it work. Like 95 is definitely workable as a s uh, offensive stat. There, the 90s are not that bad if you, especially if you pair them with choice items. But overall, you're lacking the punch needed to go at the at the pace needed for your actually um, pricey mons to succeed of course no thank you for all the insights i'm actually i'm happy people are critiquing it because like i said again i've reiterated this a lot but this is my first time in draft mm -hmm. and a lot of these mons actually are ones that i have not used before myself iron boulder i drafted that mon simply because i had not used it before and i thought it would be fun to use same with the Pichurch and alolan raichu so i just thinking to have a lot of fun and learning at the same time so these are all very like thank you thank you for this all that is not just i do i like the electric terrain core here especially plus adding in sneezler with the unburden is nice uh but yeah, yeah there there are all of the things that have been <laughs> said yeah. that i don't need yeah, to repeat. I, 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 yeah, I know I'm. I ripped a little bit uh, into this one, but um, I I feel like uh, this one this one is still uh, definitely functional. I can see why you picked the ones you picked, like that. But uh, well, th that's that's the thing with draft. It's usually a bit different, and if you want to le uh, learn this ones, that's definitely a great way to do it in draft, since you're forced to use them and learn their def uh, strengths and weaknesses in and out. Yeah, but, I, uh, I yeah. something I mentioned also uh, is quick. I, I think in coaching, I've the way I've seen it before was uh, with that trick room uh, with like Iron Hands because uh, it's slow itself, right? So I thought it makes more sense with uh, Iron Hands. And, but I can see it with the, these faster uh, electric terrain abusers because uh, at least it makes uh, the enemy get some trouble when they set up trick room because then pink coaching can go fast. So I can still see like the function of uh, pink coaching in that sense. I will say, I when I did draft in church and looking at its support moveful, I was extremely underwhelmed because it yes. does not learn any sort of good support whatsoever. If you it, saw it, it my does get uh, a shilling water, which I've seen do insane stuff when the, <laughs> when the feathers had it, <laughs> and it. But that was also in like a trick room team, so it was kind of different when it went fast all the time. But yeah, its attack my... stat is strong. Yeah. In my game, I was forced to run Acupressure as its last slot because I genuinely did not know what to add in the last slot mm -hmm. there in my team. So, but it does, in my opinion, it does what I needed to do, which is set up electric terrain. Yeah, and it was yeah, just... I agree. 
Yeah. Uh, for inter <laughs> Sorry. For int Intimidate, I did initially plan to draft Bisharp. That was on my initial draft plan, but it did get sniped by. Uh, it's free Bobby now, though. Later on, but it is free, but I. I don't know, I suppose I just like these mons better. I understand the Intimidate issue, and I understand it's a huge weakness along with the will o -S weakness, and I have all my trades available. I just don't think I'm going to make any trades despite this, because I just want to see this play out. I just want to see how that's this fine. works. That, that's absolutely fine, and especially if you want to learn them, that's the right way to go about it. Just see what works, and take everything you learn from the season to the next one. I mean, you won week one, like... Uh... If you win every every set, there's no reason to trade with you. <laughs> yeah, prove us wrong there. And yeah, uh, but for sure. I think we've talked uh, uh, long enough here. So shall we go on to the next one? All right, let's yes. go on to my team, which I got like most of what I had planned out here, and my main idea was just uh, Urshifu and Archaladon in the rain. And that, that was the plan from the start, and I feel like I've what I've drafted is a little bit better than what I had planned with I, ideas of a Pelipper or something like that. But like Klefki's, Klefki's mood pool, move pool is so wide that I've, I, e even in just like looking at it, I've started to really like it. Um, but like the, the Archaladon and the Urshifu... And the Sylveon, I've tried to just go hard into... I just want to hit hard. And hopefully fast. Uh, I don't actually have a good good Tailwind, but uh, Raichu's uh, Electroweb is something that I plan on using a lot of. Yeah. So, Do you have uh, uh, something more? Or? I don't have a lot more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then... Uh, I guess let's me, let me start off. I'd say yes. Um, your um, speed control with thunder wave, um, electro web, nozzle. Um, these are ni uh, nice things to have, and they are definitely needed here. Since uh, well, um, the, your mons, your, the mons you drafted definitely have purpose, but your leads are convoluted and take quite a bit of time. You need to set up um, rain. You need uh, to slow down the opponent with uh, Thunder Wave, with Electro Web. Getting Tailwind up with Dotrio isn't too hard, especially with Raichu, but you probably sack Dotrio for that. So you kind of have uh, the problem that you need like two turns to really get going. Since uh, your main threats are Kaladon and um, Urshifu, are in my opinion, without Tailwind, a bit too slow to really uh, br uh, break through teams uh, that easily. Since Scarf Urshifu, especially in draft, ju it just does not hit hard enough. Like oh, at all. For, for sure. You need cho if you really want to break teams, you need Choice Band or Life Orb, and uh, at that point, you get outsped, and there's a really high chance of losing your Urshifu there. But, overall, you, ha you have uh, other options uh, than Rain as well. I mean, I see uh, a decent uh, mode with uh, going more mid rangey with um, Scrafty Sylveon and even uh, Urshi to uh, clean up afterwards. Like, the options are there, but uh, you really have to plan out, um, in my opinion, the way you structure this, uh, this whole thing. Like, how to make room to actually set up rain, to actually uh, s um, set, for example, uh, into very threatening special attacker set up screen since outside of Sylveon you are kind you're kinda weak on the special side. Yeah. I, I like uh, screens uh, the screens mode quite a bit. So if you feel like it's too difficult to get the speed up and uh, compete with the speed here so, or like with the tailwind or something like that, you can fall back into it's trying to go a s slower screens mode with like Cliff Key, uh, Sylveon Scrafty or, or Caledon or something like that. Oh, and one little thing: be very careful with your <laughs> with your own electroshot next to Raichu. Oh, of this course. This is one of the things uh, pe people tend to overlook until it happens to them uh, the first oh, time I in a did. play. I would have overlooked that. I didn't realize that until now. I yeah. completely missed that as well. Realizing <laughs> that now, it's like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> that, that, that would be a big, big oopsie. Like, 
on the same level of throwing your fake goat in your own psychic terrain. Like, I would have, I would never do that. Like, never. <laughs> I used to do that all the time in psychic terrain back in Sword and Shield because you could not see terrain for the life of anything of how faint it was. I, I actually yeah. wasn't aware that that's how Electroshot works. Uh, no, Electroshot, the thing with Electroshot is it's still an electric attack and all, uh, Lightning Rod redirects everything. Really? Same with Storm Drain. Yes. Mm -hmm. So your own shots as well. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind there. That just is something to keep in mind. I wasn't even aware that you were not aware about this. Just wanted to throw it out for the audience, uh, for people that were a bit more a bit newer to this thing. But hey. <laughs> I know no, Storm Drain I, I, works I with Surf though, which is weird. Yeah, Surf hits everything. That's yeah. Uh, it just ignores it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that I mean, uh, still gives the boost. But one one of the biggest things that I grabbed Raichu for was I know that Urshifu one of Urshifu's biggest weaknesses is electric types, and mm -hmm. Raichu's lightning rod immediately just like even if it's not on the field, I, I expect I expect a light an electric type move to bring in Raichu. Yeah, oh de uh, definitely that's uh, definitely a good point that, that that's something. Uh, why I, I like Raichu in draft since it presents that threat actually and also R Raichu is one of the fastest fake out users which also buys turns since your opponent does not want to protect uh, with Urshi on the field and Raichu on the field but also at that point he has to take the fake out and still get mauled by Urshi like they're just bad mm -hmm. choices at that, uh, for your opponent and Nuzzle is one hell of a move yes yeah. oh. I do think uh, ground pipes together with Tailwind can be a bit or like Terra Ground, something like that. Uh, could get annoying, because uh, you can't Electroweb or uh, Nuzzle to find a way with them. Uh, I think and... the bigger problem here would be Terra Grass, actually. I see uh, I see nothing outside of Terra that can really effectively threaten Grass types. Yeah, I, I've got, what, Magmar and Dodrio, but they don't hit that hard. I mean, yeah. Both yeah. of them are more... Magmar is more supportive option, and Dojo yeah, is very hard to make, pull in as an offensive piece. Uh, yeah, Dojo is like uh, uh, one shot. Uh, I fire this once, and then it dies, and I, I hope it uh, achieved its purpose there. But the thing is, with your team, like even though you can point out potential issues, every Pokemon makes a lot of sense, I think. Yes. Definitely. Every That's what I has a good purpose, and... It feels like still a very well drafted for that team. Definitely, the synergy is there. Just the execution is hard, in my opinion. Yeah. Which so, that'll be down to the player. Yeah, definitely. Like the the main thing is you, you have to make a proper game plan and uh, really stick to it here. But overall, mm. like I said, everything has purpose. Like this is a well constructed team in that regard. And I think with that we can move on to the next team. Yeah. With, I believe, Fluffo will be talking about this Yeah, one. I guess I should just take this one. Okay, so, yeah, this is an interesting team. It's uh, very hard into <laughs> one specific thing. It's just, uh, I guess, Trick Room, or just, like, really bulky mounts. Almost looks like some sort of stall team, but also Trick Room team. But it's just all these bulky, <laughs> super bulky, like, Trick Room setters or Trick Room stuff. It does, like... Araquanids, which can hit pretty hard, also like mainly very bulky. Tinglu, it's also a super bulky mom, it's just a uh, Porygon 2, <laughs> Corviknight. Uh, so yeah, I feel like if the it just doesn't have the power there, maybe, uh, which can be a problem. The opponent uh, gets to do a lot of things without dying against this team. So can become difficult to deal with everything the opponent if the opponent has an idea on like a setup and stuff or if the opponent can just deny trick room somehow uh yeah they, and even with trick room they the super hard hitters are kind of uh there's there aren't that many executor and araquanid maybe uh but i don't know yeah that's the main thing here. Like, yes, this team has uh, Trick Room and Tailwind, but it doesn't do both significantly well. 
this team is just a lot of bulk and surpri surprisingly less damage to actually pull it off. Like this team really needs one or two big more hitters. Yes, they, they, uh, they all can uh, do some nice chip. Araquanid, uh, Chandelure, Executive, they can, they can also do okay damage, but not enough to get a job done in one sitting of Trick Room or Tailwind. And uh, the problem is, this is one of the teams where, where you could actually get set up on. And then it gets really scary. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh. your opponent can set up against this, just block your speed control comparatively easily, and then you're in a lot of trouble. Another thing to note is this is one of the four teams that have already had a match played so far, and as can be demonstrated versus their game with Otter and the Orlando Oshawott, is that they tried to go for setup options with Corviknight, but were just blown back by offense with Primarina and Galarian Zapdos. They did not have enough time to retaliate with how slow and passive these mons are. Yes, that's a good point. Even though you're really bulky, you can't use the... You, you don't put out too much pressure to the enemy team, so they can run very offensive sets and stuff like that. Then you just break through, I think. Yeah. You need something to threaten them, so you create some more room for like setup options in your own team, maybe. Because I feel like there's quite a lot of mons that like can be good, but you don't need both of them. Like... You have multiple trick rooms, bulky like trick room setters or bulky trick room mons. And I just don't know if you need everything. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is a lot of overlap that... here. Yeah, yeah, I just don't see. I I can't like say like, oh, this mon is the one, the ba one bad mon that needs to be traded. But you definitely need to trade some some mons. Yeah. You you definitely need to up the threat density here and uh, then decide on uh, what to do with this. But hey. I, I'm not sure about you guys, but I think we said enough here. Shall we hop on to the next one? Yeah, I don't see sure. why not. Okay, I think um, now it's my time uh, to talk again uh, for the uh, Santa Luna Storms. Um, I d I'm really sorry to interrupt, but I'll be going for about five, five, seven-ish minutes. So please, yeah. if okay, this okay. team goes on, please continue without me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. for sure. Okay, so then let's continue here. So this uh, this team is trying to ba ba play balance, but big bad here. What the fuck is fucking big doing here? It's a great this question. This one does not. This one does not fit this team at all. I think there are way better mons you can pick up there for the point cost that fit much better mm -hmm. in with your uh, game plan. Like the, the rest is there. Like uh, you have good, in good defensive intimidate cycling, catch, uh, catching hits for each other. You can uh, have decent speed control with uh, Confi and Ar Articuno as tailwind setters. Even Glare Superior is an option you can go for. And Superior of all can also get uh, out of hand quite fast if your opponent uh, isn't very of that. Even though Rio Lulu uh, lost uh, Follow Me this season. Uh, not this season, this uh, generation. It uh, still has its uh, nasty tr uh, tricks about it. And the mods that have to hit, like Magnuson and uh, Lando, can actually do so. And even yes. Articuno can hit, especially with Terra, hit for quite a chunk of damage. Like the, uh, I feel like that's a bit underrated there, even though its move pool overall is quite shallow. I think... Mm. I, I think Walking Wake isn't a terrible pick here. Since no, it's not terrible. Just, it's, it's not just terrible. Doesn't, I, no, no. It, I don't think it can ever be terrible, but uh, it's 13 points. So. Yeah, it's, it's a lot for something a cheaper mon could actually do. Okay. Yeah. In my opinion. It doesn't that, have the I'm advantage of the weather that makes you pay 13 points for Walking Wake. Yes, Walking Wake really needs either rain or sun to be awesome. Yeah, yeah and, no. and I guess there isn't a lot else on the team that really takes advantage of any weather. Yes, okay. that's yeah. uh, that's the thing. Overall, especially team. Comfy here, I like with all the bulk that's available. Like, mm -hmm. the, putting in uh, another, another bulky water, yes, I know a lot of them are taken at this point, but that's something that could work really well here. You talked about Just Milotic, the, right? Milotic was one of the options, even though I think Milotic and Comfy kind of overlap in the uh, healing up portion. 
I think uh, they can even I, I they do, but I think they like you don't have to run melodic uh, with healing. You can just run it offensively. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, it doesn't hit as uh, as hard um, as walking wake, but you're still making up a good chunk of points. And I think with especially walking wake, the dragon type is more of a weakness than a benefit here. Mm -hmm. I I would say that Gastrodon is a good option here, uh, just because. Uh, of the abundance of teams that are weak to ground. Um, yeah, but you already have Landorus. But, but you do have Landorus. You do have yeah. Landorus. You don't need it, but it, it, I feel like... Yeah, I can see it. You, you have like a bit of a... Uh, like your Landorus and Incineroar, which are mons that you want to switch out and in, and also have uh, water weaknesses. They can see like decent synergy with... Uh, with uh, uh, what's it called? A storm rain. Uh, yeah, storm rain, gas redom. I, I can see the idea of that because uh, oh, oh, by like, the way, pivoting with I... them and having storm rain makes it a lot harder to hit them. Now, so. now that I see it, uh, even though this team already is a little bit weak against intimidate itself, but Palafin, with all the switching, this team just wants to do naturally would be. Oh well, yeah, Palafin is really now. good. Yeah, Palafin is. Palafin actually is great. Would great. Would yeah, go like, great here. Uh, the, with with Instant and Lando just wanting to switch uh, around anyways, like Matt, this would actually be a good one. Yeah, because like, you're a little bit less intimidate uh, weak when you you are you have pivot your monster pivoting also. Yes, and yeah. you, you still have a competitive Articuno sitting there and just waiting to get a boost. Exactly. So, uh, yes, I think that's actually something um, Ted could consider here. Mm -hmm. So if um, Palafin gets can also be annoying with comfy, because Palafin gets pretty high stats and uh, you're stealing it up when it, it takes the hits, because yeah. it can be very annoying for the opponent. Oh yes, well I guess uh, I guess that would be uh, quite a good fix. Throw out something like Mako Sudo Voodoo, which are offering just mediocre things for you at this point. Add in uh, Palafin and you have. You really have a nasty one, like a really nasty one for your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I was actually thinking about, uh, and now that you've talked about it more, I have gone back on what I thought about it. The double intimidate was kind of a lot in my head, but like, yeah, if you're switching out a lot, intimidate twice. Why not? Yeah, intimidate twice is fine. Uh, yeah. The thing is, yeah. yes, that uh, some teams that has that have countermeasures there, mm -hmm. but uh, in in these cases, um, you can run Incineroar with Blaze. I've yes. I've done that yes. before, and it does a surprising amount of damage if you go max attack uh, and fall into Blaze range. And I just want, yeah, I was just gonna mention like a thing that's kind of annoying with Landers is uh, uh, when you have double intimidate like that. You Landers, you can't actually switch. But at least you can switch Incineroar off to intimidate if they have like King Gambit or something. Yeah. Like super scary. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. overall, I feel I, I uh, feel like this this team will will do some work. The one f right, the one negative thing here is it's a lot of work for Ted itself, since these more balanced teams with a, with a lot of switching really need to be tight uh, when it comes to their defensive EV spreads. Otherwise, there's a good shot at being overwhelmed. Yeah, hundred percent. That. Uh and in general, balance teams taking a lot more brain power, fi figuring out what am I switching, what am I switching to, and what yeah. what is the opponent going to do. Uh, yeah. But uh, w with a good pilot of this team, I think it'll do great. Yes, I agree. This this is a really solid one. Comfy and real also can have a lot yeah. of tricks. It seems like he knows how what to do with those moments from what I've gathered from what it's kind of but we'll see yeah. uh, so uh, shall we hop to the next one I think yeah, we can. I think we should and I guess I'll talk about this one uh, yeah. and right off the bat there's Hello? it's oh you're back okay uh, I guess you, you can wanna... take over then if you'd like uh, I guess I did come just in time for yeah. this okay. yeah. yeah so to start off looking at this immediately Chris has managed to grab the two small, probably the two most staple ones in VGC at the moment, Fluttermane and Ogre Pond Wellspring, along with 
for one of the most reigning champions of Gen 9 in Arcanine Sui. And underrated picks in Iron Jugulus. Now, this team has had a few trades done. Um, they had traded their Houndstone, Ratska, and Hatterene for Kilowattro, Flygon, and Toadstool. So they're down to just one trade left. And they've removed these three slowish Trick Room Mons for more fastest, solid damage dealing Mons. Um, so I, I like that they took out uh, these slow mons because I don't feel like you have a trick room mod really. You spend too many points on uh, on all these uh, high cost like non trick room mons. That trying to build a trick room core suddenly doesn't really work. Uh, like Hatterene isn't gonna be enough herself, and uh, then the rest. Uh, I don't know. You don't really have anything hard hitting. You have like Houndstone, Golem, Alola, can, but I just don't think it's enough to justify spending all the points on Hatterene if you don't have a second strong Trick Room attacker. Um, yeah. But I also like, I'm a bit iffy on the trades because uh, you already have a fast Tailwind Setter in uh, Iron Jugulis. Uh, uh, the Kilowatt is pretty good, anyways. I guess it's like it uh, has competitive, which is nice. They try to intimidate, but you're not that intimidate weak, really. Ogre Pong can be more of a support, and uh, Arcanine can switch out itself since it does intimidate. And then uh, Toad Screw is a good mon, but a, a thing that makes you pick it is uh, the Rage Powder. You already got another redirector, which is probably stronger, but having Spore is nice. It's uh, a solid mon for the points. And Flygon, I really like Flygon as a Pokemon, but I don't really think it has the stats to do much, usually. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, this team overall, uh, the top uh, four months we see with uh, Fluttermane down to Iron Draculus, they are really good. Where we brought every game, and everything else is just a little bit icing on the cake. For the few times, these four can't get the job done. And I I have to say, dropping um, the Trick Room option there, even though Houndsman isn't really a Trick Room option, more of a support with uh, some nice cleanup op opportunity in my opinion, but hey, it isn't essential here and you already have to go set and flutter main, so dropping it isn't too bad. And I like, I personally really like Kilovatril uh, in case you go up against the double Intimidate team, since, uh, let me tell you, plus two Kilovatril hurts. It really hurts. Oh, you can't yeah. underestimate that one. And I... Toad Cruel adds something uh, this team actually needs, a rock resist. Like this team and Thiagon That's... as well. This, this team is weak to rock. At, That's uh, a good point, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's something Flygon as well as Toad Cruel um, show up. So I really like them as uh, tech picks for matchups where, where you uh, simply have to be wary of these things. Also, just... not to forget, Toad's crew can also just attack and hurt people. And at this point, there w he has Ogre Pawn as a grass type, but having a uh, special attacking grass type also can be nice. And special attacking ground types are rare enough that they are uh, decently valuable, especially against uh, stuff like um, Iron Hands or Gouching Fire that are running around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... So, like, the, another I think is uh, for teams where you don't see your op op opponent having Intimidator whatsoever, being paired with Iron Jugulus isn't so bad because you also have optional wind power potentially. Well, although I do say Volt Absorb is a bit, all the other ability in Volt Absorb is a bit redundant when you have Pikachu also. I think Pikachu, personally I don't see how it hits well with Kilowattro also on the team. Dueling electric types and dueling on flying is a bit redundant in my opinion. But yeah. then again, maybe that's just because yeah, you are I, actually I'll... tripling on electric types. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, all, all yeah. I'm really seeing Pikachu doing is lightning rod and fake out. And yeah. 
I mean, better than having no fake out, but there are better options. I do Even think... Uh... With light ball and bolt tackle, this thing can put in some surprising amount of damage. Don't underestimate it. Oh, for so sure. Run the, ca run the cards and be prepared. If your team has some electric weaknesses, look at them beforehand. Don't just get one shot. Please, mm -hmm. spare yourself the embarrassment. There's some uh, even stronger thing that uh, if you somehow manage or somehow let it go off, uh, there's the strongest move in the game, basically, with the golem. It's uh, an yeah. ex explosion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you let that go off on you, your, your mons are gone. But, uh, yeah. It's a difficult thing to... I, I used it once. I used it once last season and managed to get it to work. But uh wasn't easy. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, the initial plan was a bit funny, although it wasn't that good of revival, bless revival blessing Golem to bring it back for another explosion. I definitely don't think that would be considered good, but it is a funny thing to think about. Oh yeah, oh, uh, oh, that, sure. definitely. That that would be really funny. That would be agree. really funny if if they could get it off into somebody. Sadly, but... not possible anymore because there's no Rabska. But... Yeah. yeah. But they, the fort itself counts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good idea. I mean, they they haven't played their first week match. It could still happen. Oh, that's true. Ooh, right. <laughs> they gotta they gotta do it. They only have one shot. Yeah, they gotta <laughs> do it this week. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe put uh, throwing it one in one time, and since nobody else will ever fall for it afterwards, getting rid of it beforehand <laughs> might be a good call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good that this isn't a stream too. So. Yeah. The opponent can't hear it yet, at least. I don't know when this is going off. But... Uh, I yeah. mean, I wanted it to go up today, but I... Yeah, it, no, you should. You, 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 sh you maybe, should put it up. Uh... Yeah. No, 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 you or... don't have to. Wait, I'm kidding. I don't yeah. think it yeah. matters that much. Yeah. Uh, Just like right after their match, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, well, I think we can summarize this with... Uh, well, after the trades, the, the good core is there. But the opponent will know what uh, stuff they have to bring here, so... The traits make sense to shore up uh, these weaknesses. Yeah, Overall, sure. definitely decent team. Like, we have to say a lot, uh, lot here. Decent teams, still a few slight flaws here. But nothing you can't work around. You wanna go to the next one? Yeah, yeah and I, I think it's fitting that I'll go over both of the uh, Alaskan representing teams. Um... And I, this team sure is something, uh, and I, I, the Tornadus and the Palafin, everything is, I would say that everything is a good pick. Uh, there is just some synergy issues that I'm seeing, like uh, something that Otter pointed out. You can't really howl into your own Palafin or uh, anything like that while it's on the field, but you can always bring it back in to Howl, which is, I think, something that Otter really missed is, like, yeah, you're switching out Palafin, but switching back in, yeah, can... that's first priority. Yeah. yeah. I also then... just like to point out straight up here that the average attack stat across the, across the board is just laugh laughably high. And, like, and... Before this... <laughs> and this on here is not even taking into account uh, Palafin Hero, bumping it up to 160. That's true. Uh, yeah. You wanna um, go? Yeah, let, let me go first there. I have to say, this original form of this team's pre-trade is still good. I think what uh, Otto overlooked in his uh, review was that especially Gouging Fire can function in rain. Yes, your fire attacks uh, don't do as much there, but you, still the supporting moves are there. Howl, Breaking Swipe, being mm -hmm. bloody annoying with burning bulwark. You're not and actually weak to water moves either. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Yeah. A fire type that is not weak to water moves. So the, the rain mode was there. And in sun, yes, Palafin doesn't work too well in sun. Okay, but you have enough other things that can work in sun. The one thing with the original version of the team that really stuck out to me, that really did not work in my opinion, was his Urim Gudra. That mon just did not offer anything here. You have the dragon type in gouging fire already. You have the steel type in bishop already, and it doesn't provide any offensive pressure. It's too defensive, like really defensive. That's something you do not want here. This yeah, team I think was, it, was a tornado's aggro team wanted to yeah. uh, 
press down on the opponent to make space to actually get maybe a howl or two up to finish the job, but Misu and Gudra did not help of that. But after I the trades, yeah. that's out of the window anyway. I think the only one. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, you finish. <laughs> okay, but I think these trades were really, really bad, as mean as it may sound. But I think this these trades took a really good team and made it very weak. I think uh, the one thing to me that looks like oh, it kind of makes sense with Sisu and Gudra is a uh, gouging fire as like supports. You can play slower with it, but uh, the problem is they're both weak to ground. You don't have anything else that builds into that mode, like uh, some screens user or something like that. Because the team's built more around tornadoes, right? That's the same. But I can see like gouging fire plus Gudra's kind of. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the trades were weird. I think it made more sense, as you said, to use trade Gudra. Yeah, I, I, I just gotta agree that um, the trades are kind of hurting it. And now that you can't trade back, like he's used up all of his trades. Um, and I mean, sure, it has Ogre Pawn now, but that's. Yeah. The, the thing, the things you lost, you lost um, one of the top three months you can pick at all. Like tornadoes is that good? Yeah. Having having this strong of ha having one of the two strong priority tailwind setters that can do some uh, actually pressure the opponent yeah, like... um, is really 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 valuable. Bishop is bl is bloody undercosted in the, uh, in this league like hellishly. It's not much worse than. King Gambit here, at least the AV King Gambit. Yes, you're. If you go with more offensive sets uh, like like glasses or something on King Gambit, yes, you can get out a bit more damage. But uh, overall, in taking hits, it's just as uh, adept with EV or Light, and its attack stat of 125 is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, especially with the de Defiant, and I, there might not be a lot of Intimidate in the league this time around, but the Defiant is still something. Yes. Yeah, and, um, and we it's... saw like a double intimidate team, right? Yeah, yeah we saw a double intimidate. <laughs> you got and the... There's all of the electro web and icy wind that you can still switch in on and see. Oh yeah, you dropped my speed, but now I'm so much more pressure. Yes, and now, yeah, now I can sucker punch you at plus two and good night. Yeah. Also, you all you already had howl, which works well with this shop since your opponent. In the good old um, sucker punch mind games, might click protect when the hole goes up, so uh, you kind of get a free boost there. So yeah, I, f I feel like th there's a lot of lost potential. Yeah, I think the team uh, relies a bit too hard on Illumisa now, which is a mon that can set up Tailwind, but I like it more on teams as a more niche pick than something that you have yeah, to rely on, because it's the only Tailwind user on a team that kind of has nothing but Tailwind yeah, uh, as yeah, a mode. And that's something you don't that really I... have uh, any good... You have like Espion kind of like screens, maybe, I don't know. It's just like a bit harder to play slower, especially with like Landers. Uh, <laughs> I feel like with uh, Landers you want Tailwind really badly. And, yeah, yeah. and you don't even have Azelf, the second best explosion user. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. as of, uh, I'm, it's something I'm not that big on, but yes, it at least removes stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which can help, that can help more like yeah, yeah, slower so. months like Gudra um, later on. And now you have a, even less maybe to do that. Yeah. So I think, but I think we've uh, been uh, mean enough here. Shall we uh, move on to the next one? Yes. I don't I see guess. why not. Uh, I think Fluffo was next to explain are okay this team this team has a uh, scream tail my favorite uh, draft pokemon um otherwise it looks kind of weird when i first looked at his team i was uh, a little bit confused i didn't really know what direction it was going um but then uh silent pointed something out like we see excadrill right we don't see tarantar Tarantar was drafted, right? 
Why would there yep. else be an exterior? I... No, it was. I, I'm it saying. I'm, I know yeah, exactly. Open. Exactly, so no one drafted Tarantor, which means I don't think is one of the most undervalued Pokemon. Look at this, like, switch out Amoongus. And we also, Amoongus, seems weird on this team. I, you don't really benefit that much from the redirection, like, Amoongus is not as strong in draft. Um, we think Tyranitar, you switch out Tyranitar for Excadrill in this team. Uh, and no, then, for Amoongus. Are you uh, uh, I, 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 I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, Amoongus for Tarantor, so you get the partner with Excarill. <laughs> That's what I meant. And then, what was it? Uh, uh, take, take out Bombardier uh, for Arboliva, and you have a bloody. Oh, yeah. Scary. You you only need oh, to take yeah. out Bombardier. And then you get Arboliva. Absurdly strong in this team, actually. Like, it has such good synergy. It's like super scary Trick Room Core with Arboliva, Iron Hands, uh, uh, like Broxis. Um, and then uh, also Tyranitar can work very very well in Trick Room. Then you have the fast uh, uh, or like the outside of Trick Room with like Tailwind plus Tyranitar plus Excadrill. Uh, also Iron Valiant can threaten very hard, uh, like clean up in the late game uh, with booster energy. And then you have also Typhlosion to put in that special damage. Uh, like it, the team becomes insane with those traits, in my opinion, I think. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I think a, a big mistake a lot of players make with Amoongus is think it works in um, in any defensive kind of way. Basically, fact. I think uh, an easier way to put it is uh, think it works the same way as in normal VGC. Yes. Uh, yes. It simply it does not work like a normal VGC in draft since everyone can prepare for it, and if your game plan is too slow, Amoongus does nothing. So, basically the. The teams where it shines are the really bloody aggressive ones, the ones that uh, where you, you spread your opponent thin on prep anyways, and then prepping for a Moogus on top makes it hard. Let's say also a team where you have like absurdly strong uh, fire types or something to, to d discourage grass terra, some yes, stuff like Typhlosion that. Yes, Typhlosion is okay there, but I think it's simply not enough. Yeah. And. Um, you have a, in my opinion, have a hard time justifying it on a trick remote since on a trick remote you just want to kill your opponent like flat out. And in a fast mode, you simply have better options than trying to sleep your opponent. You can't prevent opposing trick rooms since they it's draft. They will have goggles. They will have the grass terror there. They simply ignore it. Like yes. it's it ends up being a sitting duck in these situations. It's I think still it can do a lot. I just don't think it's worth having points. Uh, on yes, most teams. Uh, yeah, on most teams, that's right. Like forcing it's, the uh, opponent to prep for it, and then also you can't, you can outmaneuver them always still. Uh, it's not impossible. Um, but yeah, you see, like this week, he ended up using uh, Amungus as an offensive. It's a bit of a, you baited a bit there, but obviously it was into the electric terrain team, but still, like, it shows. Amoongus is maybe not as strong in draft because other stuff up here that counter it more than in normal yeah. VGC. Bold statement, if you want to, if... Oh, Dra Draco, because you played it, right? Yeah, as when I initially this team matchup versus me anyway, I personally just did not see Amoongus coming in any yeah. sense versus me in any case because I have... I see Amoongus as a pure supported mod and I have two grass types and electric terrain. So mm -hmm. their best utility in Spore and Rage Powder is very redundant, but they didn't end up surprising me with Life Orb and Mungus, something I yeah. would not consider. They did manage to do significant damage to my mons in game two, but game one, but still, it's not, again, it's not, when you know it's coming, if it, if I did not have what I had, I would just slap on safety goggles, I only had Terra Grass on two of my mons. So it's very hard, very easy to prepare for, I'd say. Yeah, that, that's just the general uh, how weak Spore is in draft that I've found. Yes, definitely. If your opponent is coming, it loses a lot of value. That's, for example, why I think, um, what's its name, Smeargle is rightfully not drafted. Like, the old, uh, yes, Smeargle has access to every move, but... It, its main thing is redir reliable crashed. redirection with Spore, and that's just mediocre. It's not worth enough if you have op uh, other ones that can do it partially, just 
but uh, with uh, more punch behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our Bolivar is uh, better for the value craft type in your to the in your trick and call because you can get the grass to run up and uh, it adds a strong special attacker to it which you don't have before. And then Tyranitar. Yeah, very good Ty Tyranitar is like uh, the the most ridiculously undercosted mon on this draft board. Oh like, yeah. Have you looked at that move pool? Like, I... if you want something dead, Tyranitar will get it dead, flat out. AV Tyranitar is something you can slap on into most matchups and ju just be happy. It's easy to use, just flat steams. And, and also and having Excadrill really already bit... makes yeah, it so and... easy to. Put in yeah, this X could is a nice up, but sand on its own is really undervalued. Like it's the best standalone weather, even with no other abuser, since it just adds nice, consistent chip damage. Yeah, yeah I mean I, it depends on the teams. On some teams, you. I was thinking, did I? Sorry. No, I I just like it. Everything cut out for a second. Uh, something I was thinking about is like. On the current team, I don't feel like other than the types and mold breaker ground moves, I don't feel like Excadrill does a lot. But if you did add in the ty the Tyranitar, maybe you run Sandstorm on Tornadus. Uh, but it, if you throw in Tyranitar in this, it's it becomes that much more that much scarier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that might be a thing um, because I can't. Uh, I get my main view of things from NetX. Um, Excadrill is uh, a classic ICBM mon. Like fire, fire it across the uh, to the opponent. Let it uh, rip something out. Die in return. Excellent. It did a drop. And with sand, it does it really, really well. Slap a choice band on it. Just uh, trade it off. You probably trade up. I think you can live. No, it dies. Possible. It dies. Uh, I've I've used it before. It dies, but it gets the job done. It removes stuff. It trades one for one. That's good enough. Yeah, with the defense, it does it really 60s, well. It's not. I mean, it's got high HP at least. Yeah. It does have that. I think maybe in Netex there are more like extreme attackers. Yes, because... in net in Netex, like I said. That uh, might be a net decks thing there since uh, everything hits harder, everything is faster. Everything yeah. gets whatever Get, gets pursuit. Like, all the ridiculous moves from yeah. the past. Uh, so yeah, that's that. I think we've said a lot about this team now. Yeah, I think yeah. we've said a, uh, about enough. We can move yeah. on to yeah. uh, Einer geht noch. Yes, uh, to a fellow German. <laughs> and I have to say... Uh, that's be of good to the Junge. So, because, uh, well, let's say it this way. This team, gosh, he must have drank one too many beer here. I, I have to be the mean one again. But this team, uh, well, yes, it's, uh, it tries to do um, Sunroom. I get it. It doesn't do it well enough. The leads are way, way, way too passive. Yeah, I, I'm actually facing this team week one, and like the main things that I'm playing around are stop their trick room and get rid of their weather, and I feel like past that, there isn't a lot that the team does. I mean, this team needs like two, like again, two setup turns, but the ones uh, it needs to do them with are just too passive for the start. Cresselia, yes, can be annoying if you pair it with something threatening. If you pair it with something threatening here, you can't protect it. So uh, the thing is, throw Cresselia next to Raging Bolt or Ursaluna. Both mm -hmm. these mons really have a hard time uh, doing anything turn one, uh, at least at uh, threatening. Ursaluna needs to wait um, for uh, the flame orb to go off. And uh, Raging Bolt uh, either needs its own setup or just fire, fire a mediocre Thunder... Okay, a decent Thunderbolt with the opponent or Draco, but not the most threatening things. While Crest needs to try to set up um, 
big room. Yes, it can go for icy wind plays, but even then you are probably slower with Ursa Luna or Raging Bolt into the faster team, especially if they get Tailwind up. And uh, so to stop uh, shenanigans like uh, Raw, for example, which completely blow out any attempts of uh, getting Trick Room up, you kind of sit there at that point. Yeah, it's like Orphirm also on this team. It's uh, it, like its main thing. It, it makes sense a little bit with Asa Luna. You have Alpha Eater, but uh, you just don't really have uh, the most immediate threatening things that you can uh, uh, go into with uh, the... Uh, Substitute, and like yeah. if you try turn one to like the I don't know Cresselia Wolfworm to set up Trick Room and click uh, uh, what's it called Shed Tail, that's just uh, you just can't expect to get away with that. Yeah, so. and, and uh, its HP stat is is not giving that good of a substitute to whatever it's yeah. giving to. It's only base seventy, mm -hmm. which is yeah. it's a yeah. choice. Yeah. From my experience, Earthworm works best in teams that can actually put a lot of pressure on immediately and uh, cycle it in later uh, to facilitate a uh, close to unbeatable endgame. Putting something like, uh, let's go that decks here, for example, what something that really nearly broke me in a match was uh, a late game uh, Shed Tail into uh, a Mega Swampert in the rain. Like, that's scary. That's something that will break you. Here you you need uh, to get Trick Room up somehow, get uh, Earthworm to do, uh, to do its thing, and not get the sub broken on the same turn there, and that's the hard yeah. part. Like that. I had it with. It, uh, I didn't use it that much. I had a lost season Earthworm, I had it with Gaussian, which is a bit of a faster, more immediate threat you can uh, go into. And then uh, also, if you bring it out again, you can start uh, healing up the Earthworm with your earthquakes. And then what I noticed is. Uh, if you remove the special attackers, uh, Orphan just wins, basically. Because <laughs> yeah, it's... but that's uh, that's something this team has a ha really hard time since <laughs> yeah. it doesn't bring enough pressure to actually remove exactly. stuff immediately. Yeah. Like this, this team is would be better off in uh, deciding to focus on uh, on something in instead of uh, share, uh, spreading out that much. And overall. I'm really not a fan of Trick Room as its primary mode. Trick Room as a primary mode is a trap. Yeah, it draft, is. At least. I and think Silent is a big Trick Room hater, um, but I also think uh, this like it can, you can make it work, but you need something else. You can't just have a, only Trick Room, and then you also have a lot of low cost mons. So you have you don't really have any of those strong attackers that uh, can let you set up the trick room no i I, yes. I think that like spore trick room is a lot to just play around and build like you're you're prepping for trick room uh, unless mm. you're the other half of the team that they've drafted is really fast and is gonna blow you out of the water uh yeah. then and trick room as a main mode is i i i have to agree with silent here yeah um uh, we will come to the uh, the next one. Uh, this um, we're gonna have. Then I have to talk a bit more about Trick Room. Yeah, but more yeah, of that. More of that talk. The, uh, yeah. Uh, close up this one. This one needs to get more focus into its fast mode somehow. Like like I said, Earthworm is a bit too unrealistic to uh, do enough here. Um, Alola Mola. Yes, mascot, but you can use the point somewhere else. And even Sableye, you do, you simply do not have the partners here. Like Sableye functions, in my opinion, best if you have immediately threatening partners that uh, rip um, through the opponent if um, get a, get a free, uh, if they can get a free turn. Sableye can provide. Like Squa uh, Prankster Quash is strong, but. Yeah, okay, Ursa Luna, maybe, maybe if Flame Orb goes up, but that's a lot to ask. Yeah, you have to wait a turn for that. Yes. And you mm. yeah, also become passive turn one, because Ursa Luna is not, it's not, it's strong, but it's not that actually that strong without the Flame Yeah. So you all have another <laughs> passive lead. Yeah, th th simply put, this team's leads are too passive. If it, fi uh, if 
uh, it finds some ways to get around with these passive fleets to shore them up. It can do work, but in my opinion, as long Excuse as it's that. Excuse me, I'll be gone. Just okay. For a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we've said enough, though. Yeah, I yeah, think we've yeah, said enough on this team. We can move on to Orlando Oshawats. They they've had a match. Uh, I did. I haven't seen any of the matches yet, or s the results. But like, yeah. like the last team, I think that this kind of has a heavy focus on Trick Room, and it's that that just it's a I choice. It's, it's so, fine here let, though because let, it functions it functions a lot better as well. Yeah. Um, let me interject here. This yeah. team is how to trick to Trick Room right. You do trick room. If you uh, if you also have a decently uh, a functioning tailwind mode and a bloody ton of bull, like and a very strong to... lead with Rillaboom. Yes, the, uh, that's Rillaboom the thing. Rillaboom, Farid, Giraffe, uh, unbeatable yeah. lead, like very consistent. You, yeah. They can't fake out you. You can fake out them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get in general, this team has probably the the strongest standard uh, standalone leads in the league. Rillaboom for Rigoroth, extremely hard to beat. Rillaboom, Galarian Zapdos, extremely hard to beat. Uh, for Farig uh, Rigoroth, uh, Ursula and Blood Moon. If, if, you have, if you suspect your opponent uh, goes passive, you can just uh, do that and hammer them. Like, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, that's on the riskier side, but like we discussed, there are some teams that have to lead rather passively. And they can bring the pain. The one thing I really do not like is Umbreon, since it does not provide pressure. Yes, it has some nice utility. Yes, it's super bulky. But compared to what this team wants to do, bu uh, being really bulky and beat you down in whatever uh, speed control mode is best for it at the time, it really does not provide. Like, like, screens are, are a fun idea, but you are already so bulky that yeah. screens are redundant. So there are simply better options, in my opinion. Like, for, for six points, there are a few other mons you can grab. For example, uh, a mon I really like is Mabosta. You get Intimidate, you get actually something to protect you from Intimidate, and a dark type with uh, 130 attack that can threaten things. I think uh, I was curious to see Umbreon on this uh, match, but I'm pretty sure Otto didn't bring it at all, if I remember correctly. So yeah, we didn't get to see what he was thinking with it, but we just saw. He just, he just put out more damage and broke through uh, the uh, uh, Wien's team, which is kind of what would be expected of that matchup, I think. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Umbreon is, prob is definitely got to be the weakest member of the team. Yeah, I mean Rotom, I don't know, it I, does a lot, but <laughs> it's super I mean, cheap. Rotom so. at, uh, at least can be a bit annoying with uh, Willow spam and stuff. And it's, it's true. Bad. It, it's, a one, it's a one point one. Yeah. Like, th this team needs, needed something cheap to fill out, and there are worse picks than Rotom. I, I'd, I'd call it relatively fast Thunder Wave. And it's not that yeah. bad at that. It's something. Yeah, that's true. It, it's something. It's, uh, it's not nothing. I think it. Pro uh, overall, for points to points ratio to what it does, it does more than Umbreon. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can leave it at that. Since yeah, overall, I... the team is good. Just uh, I, I think just Umbreon has. I'm so uh, careless about know. inner focus because you already have very direct too. That's worth yeah. mentioning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, simply put, this team can put work in like all the other more defensive teams they require a good pilot and a lot of uh, prep but hey i think otter was the uh, champion league champion if, if i recall correctly so Both. i think yeah, we, we don't talk about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, i would, would be fun if i uh, could have a sparring match with him <laughs> oh yeah but, that's but that's for another team. time uh, uh, yeah we can move on to the next team the guy that sniped my pelipper uh, <laughs> which yeah I, I think it's all right here uh i like it yeah 
and it, it gives the Leki more accuracy on his thunders, and it gives Overquill some more speed that it misses a lot. Uh, and, and, Dreadnought. and Dreadnought. And Dreadnought. Yeah. Um, and and Monkey Dory we saw last season is is really strong in in draft, and the the Garchomp is just an an explosion waiting to happen anyway. Uh, yeah. Not not literally the move, but it just hits hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I th- um I have to say overall the team has internal cohesion definitely. Like that's oh, not yeah. a question. Yet. Uh, it's more like um, it's need um, it j- just needs a little bit more, I think. Since I had... yeah. Since yeah, uh, it kind of does its stuff, but I think like there feel there feel there is a little bit uh, of an edge missing here. And I think for ex- uh, something uh, Flupo pointed out, even though this is, may not be a traditional. Uh, team you would consider Orangaroon since Trick Room isn't that good for this one. Orangaroon overall with uh, how this team is structured might do some hellish good work here. Especially mm-hmm. since Orangaroon gets telepathy. Garchomp with uh, telepathy and uh, what's it called? Instruct can r- run through teams here. It's and also a Reggie Lecky too. Uh, the k- if you put it in a spot where the electric spam is possible. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, or you just get sure. two... You can remove both things from the field before they can attack. <laughs> yeah, or, and, Ske- and Skeledurge, uh, Torch Song, uh, oh, yeah. Instruct yeah. is nasty. Yeah, that's... Uh, like, or... there, 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 there are op- definitely options here. And I can uh, I can see it, and I personally like them over some of the other options this team has, like Porygon Z. Yes, Porygon Z hits hard, but uh, I think you can do a bit more there. Also, Reverum... Uh, Reverum typing wise is a bit overdone since there are already two other poison types. Yes, steel type, but still, this team is ground weak enough. Adding that thing there will not help you. I think also um, Oranguru adds a better option if you want to go Trick Room because it's a very, very reliable Trick Room setter too if yeah. you run and, it. Yeah. If you the thing is, are the out in here. I usually not considered good in Trick Room, but what this does is, if you see your opponent going for a Tailwind mode, you exactly. cannot see yeah. at all. This is an out. This team yes. are, does yeah, not really have out otherwise. Also, it's a uh, good in Prison Trick Room also option. Yes, that. That, that's the other yeah. thing. This team also isn't good that great at blocking Trick Room. It also helps with that. I like, think it's. It's actually a glue that will hold. God of War can work. It's, I just think I just think uh, Orangaroo is a much better moment. It, that works much better with a lot of things in this game. Yeah. And Orangaroo, uh, it, in my opinion, is one of the better uh, imprisoned trick room mons anyway, because it's not just sitting on the field protecting or whatever. It's instructing and getting its partner mm-hmm. to do even more. Yeah, it's it's almost never useless. As long as yeah. you don't let, you, as long as you don't like use run support moves on it and let it get taunted, then it's usually not that unhappy. Yeah, that, that's like just like it. just don't get taunted. I I I talked to a bit Twimbly and people had started apparently running double taunt turn one <laughs> into oh, really? into their Oranguru <laughs> last season because it was so fucking but, annoying. But why you can just click raw? That like that's way better. Uh yeah, but something. Uh, uh, worth noting, you you like uh, run. Uh, I don't know. Not, not everything gets raw. To be fair. Yeah, raw, yeah. whirlwind, whatever. Phasing is good. And yeah. I, like Zapdos I, I uh, doesn't get whirlwind in yeah, this generation. Z- yeah, Zapdos got gutted in that <laughs> that respect. Yeah. I know. But overall, that it's uh, every team should have have one phasing option just to get rid of Trick Room. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the one thing with Oranguru. Is it, it's one of the bloodiest, riskiest mons to actually raw into, since it can just instruct yeah, you to do I, I wanted to mention that to you. Like, it doesn't. It wasn't just to prevent trick room, also pr- to prevent tr- instruct. So. Yeah. It does don't. It's so risky because you don't do anything in inter- instruct. Yeah. Th- th- that's something that got me in the UPL in the uh, semi final. Nearly got me in the semi finals was uh, Lightning Monkey uh, running Trailblaze into. Um, 
Oh, it's yeah. pa partnering uh, Tinglu to trigger weakness policy and then be blooding annoying with uh, plus one speed and uh, instruct. Like, yeah. this thing is not as slow as it looks. Yeah. But yeah, I... Um. <laughs> Orang Oranguru would be good for this team, yeah. Definitely, yeah. So, uh, anything else to add? Otherwise, I think we finished uh, SV this far. Yes, we have finished... Yep. The start of that league, and I think we've talked enough about every team. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Uh, do we want to try to take a break for a little bit, or just move on and keep rolling? That, that's what I wanted to ask. I'd say uh, let's take a little uh, break, yeah, five, ten minutes, break. I'd say, and then continue with the next league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right.